Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about $19 photo shoots. So there was a, uh, my friend Seth, as you guys have probably seen, uh, talked about on his show on Anorama, Rewind, uh, about this company that is, uh, I guess, setting up photo shoots for clients with photographers and stylists and all this other stuff. And ultimately, the client just pays for the photos they like, starting at, I think it's $19, and they go up from there. Um, honestly, I didn't fully look into it yet. Um, which is the best way to make a comment about something. Um, but um, it's funny because a few days prior to that, my, my other friend sent me a link who, she works for like a corporation, uh, a small startup company, I should say. Um, and uh, you know, they have very low budgets. And she was like, what do you think about this situation here? And, and apparently it's a, um, a headshot type thing where uh, the person comes out, and I think it's, it's brokered, uh, the person comes out and shoots or whatever, and then you only pay for the shots you want. And those shots start at like $15. So it seems like a similar type of process. Um, and the question, I guess, becomes, wow, is that really cheap for photos? And like, is that fair? Is that going to ruin the industry? You know, this is the kind of stuff that I guess is, is happening. Um, you know, people are talking about. So I thought I'd weigh in on this because why not? Um, so I guess in order to give you a little bit of background on this for me, um, this is not something new in the fashion industry. I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, this kind of started, at least, at, at least in my view, um, something like 10 or 12 years ago. I remember, this is the first time I really remember seeing it. Maybe a little bit longer than that. I guess I was probably still, yeah, I would say that uh, even further back than that, on some level it started, but not with the smaller companies. And what I mean by this is, once the internet became uh, much more of a marketplace, right? I mean, you, you uh, which is, you know, not that long ago when it comes down to it. Um, you know, if you were, let's say, Spiegel, well, Spiegel's still around, um, but anyways, you were Macy's, you were any of these big catalog companies, you basically uh, hired a photographer and, you know, they'd book us for like a week or something and we'd go down to a place like Miami or you'd go some. Paris or wherever you're going to go, right? You go somewhere cool, you get a bunch of models, you shoot the kind of the key shots that are going to be the large shots in the, in the, in the catalog, the covers, you know, the, the, most, the, the stuff they want to push the most, stuff they think they're going to sell the most, it's going to bring the people in. Um, you shoot those in beautiful locations. Um, and then generally like the last couple of days uh, of the, the shoot, you would do what we used to call the silos. So the silos are basically um, almost always shots against white. Um, sometimes they were, they started to become later, um, like we'd shoot on the beach and just have like a blue sky or whatever. But anyways, um, basically these shots are the smaller shots generally, right? And a lot of times too, we would actually even shoot like, you know, crap part of the face. And, and you know, if it's like a t-shirt shot, if it was underwear, you'd just shoot, you probably can't see this part of my body, but you'd just shoot the, uh, you know, basically the waist. Um, and part of that had to do with negotiations with modeling agencies and stuff, you know, like rights and blah, blah, blah. Especially since those... Um, Particular shots can carry over multiple years because a t-shirt is a t-shirt, right? Um, so you would shoot those at the end, you know. Um, you would do a lot more of those in a day because they were fast and quick and they weren't really a big deal. And a lot of times we'd shoot those like 35 millimeter, for instance, when we were shooting medium format on the other stuff. Uh, or with a DSLR versus a medium format uh, back, you know, to cut costs and stuff and increase speed. Those shots somehow uh, got sucked out um, of the main catalogs. Um, not from the catalog, using the catalogs themselves, but they started being put online like faster and, and whatever, more furiously. And what a lot of companies would do is at first, I think they were using in-house photographers maybe, or they'd hire like a, a more uh, inexperienced photographer or somebody just starting that works on a lower day rate that would just come in the studio and shoot things on white, you know, as opposed to the photographer that's charging a lot of money to shoot the catalog with the background. Um, and basically, this started to get sucked away a little bit at a time. But when I first kind of came in contact with it on this level that I'm talking about now with this whole $19, $20 thing is maybe 10 or so years ago. I was uh, shooting, you know, fairly regular catalogs. I had a couple of pretty decent catalog companies I worked for, which amounted to me working maybe like, you know, a week every three or four months for them. And honestly, that was enough money to live pretty well, and I had gotten rid of my studio in Manhattan because I moved into a house, um, and frankly, I had a whole bunch of time. And I wanted to try to do some other things. I was doing more personal projects, but I also know that you need to stay kind of in the game, if you will. You know, you don't want to like settle on these things because in the end, that actually uh, can burn you, and I'll do another video about that. But um, 
so I started just kind of looking for little things to shoot, you know, the, like do maybe some do some actors headshots again, or maybe start shooting, shooting for some modeling agencies. Even though the money that that paid was not nearly what I made on a day rate of shooting a catalog or an advertising job, it was still money coming in. It's something I could use for for you know, uh, put into an account for a vacation or buy some equipment with or put away for a rainy day, that kind of stuff. Um, and a friend of mine, um, who I kind of came up with, you know, we both were photo assistants together, started working for this company in Florida where they hired him on full time as like a staff photographer. And he worked, um, at first he was one of, and then I think he managed um, a few photographers. Uh, and they worked in this like big warehouse in Florida. And he was telling me, he was like, oh, you know, because we were talking, he'd be like, oh, you know, next week I'm shooting Calvin Klein. And I was like, Calvin Klein? You know, it's like, Whoa, wow, you're doing well for yourself. Oh, no, no, it's, they've got a contract with this, this company I'm working for, blah, blah. Um, you know, and essentially what would happen is these, this warehouse full of photographers, which was he was a little bit uh, older, you know, um, and a little bit more seasoned, but most of them were fresh out of college type guys. Um, and it was really simple stuff set up. And they were paying him basically an hourly wage. I mean, it was not a lot of money per se, especially compared to what you'd get to actually shoot for Calvin Klein. But it was um, decent, and if you're fresh out of school and you have the choice of slugging around with somebody's equipment for $125 a day as a photo assistant and busting your ass, or making that same amount of money to shoot for Calvin Klein, you know what are you going to do? So there was lots of young photographers lined up to do this stuff, and I thought it was really interesting. Um, and then he told me, "Oh, there's a place near you that does this," and I was like, "Oh, well, that's kind of interesting." So curiosity, curiosity got to me. I was thinking, you know what? I'm gonna go in there and see what they'll pay me, and I will work there a little bit and see what they do. You know, it's like a freelance kind of thing. I mean, they hire people full time, like with benefits and everything, actually. Um, but they also hire freelancers, so that's kind of what I did. So I went down and uh, we negotiated a rate, which was my rate, of course, was much higher than <laughs> than what they were paying somebody fresh out of school, but it still was really low compared to what I would make if I was actually shooting the catalog. Um, and uh, I went down to the facility, and they were super nice. You know, I mean, it was basically this guy who had money and decided he wanted to be a photographer, but wasn't a photographer, and essentially got this large warehouse space he bought, um, I think they were using Dynalights. But he had like pro photo, not pro photo, but he had like professional photography lighting, he had like high-end DSLRs, he had, uh, I think, four bays for like live shooting, like on models, and then he had a whole bunch of still life tables set up, uh, all with, uh, you know, these computers uh, on a network, and we all had Capture One, and, uh, you know, basically you'd come in for the day and they'd assign you the thing. Um, I stayed there for about a week. You know, I worked for a week. I told them I'd give them a week and see if I liked it. Um, and I shot uh, those 59, 59, 15, what's it called? Those hats, you know, the really nice hats uh, for a week. And it was a fascinating experience. I met a lot of the other photographers, um, most of which were, again, very young and super happy to have such a, such a job. They were like, oh, man, yeah, I'm fresh out of school and here I am working full time as a photographer shooting for, you know, uh, Louis Vuitton or blah, blah. And it was really, really interesting. I mean, it was mostly, again, it was the silos, right? It was the kind of low end work. It wasn't like they're shooting the, the cover of the catalog or the most important thing and they're not like going all over the country and, and shooting these beautiful catalogs. Uh, they're shooting basically on white or sometimes on black. Um, very, very simple things. They don't have to own a single piece of equipment. They just have to know how to operate what they gave them. They walk in there, they shoot, they walk out at the end of the day, they got their weekends off, they're not, not stressed out. Um, and they seem pretty happy, you know, and it paid a living wage, you know. Um, I think they were making somewhere in that vicinity of that like 15 to $20 uh, uh, per hour they were getting up per photo. Um, I was getting more for the week that I was there. Um, but what I thought was interesting about it was this. First of all, I, after a week of doing it, I was like, <laughs> I'd rather do a headshot. I can make what I made in the week there doing one headshot and whatever. It was an interesting experience. I think I kind of did it with the thought that maybe I'll hire a few photographers and try to pick up some of these clients and do this kind of work. You know, why not? I could be like a manager of photographers. But then I realized that that, that wasn't for me. So I just kind of went the other way. But, uh, but anyways, what I thought was interesting about it was this. You've got these people, right, shooting with these high-end companies, essentially. And even though they're just the silos, I realized that they had a couple of, like, meetings when I was there, and which I was part of because I was there. Um, and it was interesting to see these, like, young art directors speaking with these young photographers and talking about what the client was asking. And it really felt like they didn't get it, you know? And there was a large part of me that wanted to say, 
hey, you know what? Um, instead of having me shoot this still life stuff, I mean, you looked at my portfolio. Um, actually, with, when I showed them my portfolio, they were like, why are you even here? And I was like, well, I wanted something. You know, it's like, I shoot real catalog stuff if you want some advice. And they felt like, no, they had it under control, you know, because they had the client. Um, and they were losing them. They were losing those clients because they couldn't actually produce the stuff that had the right feel for that client, right? There was no emotion to it. There was no real kind of skill set because they were hiring people that didn't have a background enough to be able to pull it off. And I think I've said this before um, that time, right, is the thing that ends up making us be able to accomplish a lot of things uh, in life in general, right? but also in photography. The longer you do something, the kind of more experience you have doing it, the kind of the more you can communicate uh, with uh, people through your photography and through your um, through your skill set. And even though you might have an amazing eye and be really really creative, if you're just starting, a lot of times you, it's hard for you to pull that stuff off. And they were really struggling with that. So I, I'm curious. Um, and of course, I was you know, it was actually kind of funny to see. It was almost it was almost like being on a reality show. To be honest with you. But anyways, I don't want to make fun of people. I think they were all very nice and. And it was a cool experience. I mean, they, they paid me and whatever, I moved on. Um, but what I think is really interesting here is this thought process now to go back to the original thing is that I'm wondering who they're gonna get for the money that they're paying that's gonna shoot these jobs for these clients. You know, so what I mean by that is, okay, so let's say for instance, you know, you, you're, you're a young photographer or young meaning you're just starting in photography, you might be you know, 30 or 40 or 50 or however old you are. Um, and you're like, hey man, yeah, I'd love to shoot for you know, this small boutique and, and shoot their catalog or their, their little products or whatever. Um, and I don't really care about the money because I'm just starting and I want to get something in my book or whatever the reasoning that you have that you want to work this cheap. What you're probably gonna find is, if you're the, the client hiring, is that these photographers that are just starting are not necessarily going to always be able to achieve the job. And I guess that's the whole point of the paying per photo, right? So you're gonna say, okay, come shoot my catalog, and if I like the work, I'll pay for it. Right away, what that sets off is this idea that it might not be good enough, right? And my thought process there is why would you hire somebody that might not be good enough. You know, why would you even want to be involved in something where people might think that you might not be good enough? You know, it's like if you are have a strong book and you have a background, you have experience, you should be getting paid. You know, not by them giving you the picture. Now, I guess you pay by the print if you're, you know, you, you work on a cruise ship and you, but you're not, right? If you're the photographer on a cruise ship, you know, they might be buying prints or whatever, but you get paid because you, you get a salary, right? It's like the idea that you should have to go and like shoot this thing almost like a stock agency, which is how uh, Seth kind of described it, which is kind of interesting. It's almost like you're producing a stock image for them that they might buy, and they might not buy. And I don't know exactly how they're paying the photographer, so I do not know exactly. I don't think the photographer gets $19. I'm not exactly sure, so you know, that's a whole other thing. Um, but the idea being is that if you, if you are in fact being put in a position where if you, they don't like the photo, you're not going to get paid, that's a really bad position to be in as a photographer. I, I really, I really, really would recommend that people that are starting not do something like that. Um, because especially if you're being dictated as to what it is you have to do. Now, when I was first starting, and this still exists, I'm sure, uh, we did spec editorials for magazines. You know, you'd, find ma you'd find a young designer and shoot something and try to get it published, right? So that cost you time, it cost you money, you, were, you didn't know it was going to get published. But in the end, if the mag one magazine didn't take it, you still produced this cool fashion editorial that was in your book and you still whatever. But if I'm hired by some mom and pop shop to shoot their pizza, you know, and they don't want the picture at the end, I'm stuck with the fucking pizza. Excuse me, mom. I'm stuck with a picture of pizza that I can't use or I have no use for because I shot it to their specs for them, for no money. So I hope the photographers are getting a base rate for it. I don't actually know. Maybe I should look more into it. Maybe I will if this is interesting. People, let's talk about it a little bit and maybe some people know more about it. Maybe some people have done it. But if you're showing up there and you are not getting paid unless they like the picture, I say don't do that. If you're getting paid an hourly rate no matter what, hey, go for it, right? If they're paying you and you can actually kind of, uh, you know, shoot some cool jobs and see what works. But also consider that a company that is willing to hire that kind of person would never have hired an expensive photographer. So if you're on the other end, like you're, let's say me, 
I'm not going to be bitter at those companies. It's like any company that, uh, you know, for the most part, that's going to hire on that service would not have been hiring me anyways. They're not going to be like, well, I could pay, you know, $10,000 for a photo shoot here, or I could pay $30. Yeah, I'll pay $30. Nobody does that. That's just not the way it is. It's like if you have that money, I mean, you might want it cheaper, but you're not going to go to that extreme, in my opinion, unless you just don't care about your images. So I guess there, uh, the sun's fading here, so I'm probably getting darker. Um, I guess here in summary, what I want to say is, let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think this is a good way to operate? Is this something that, that you would, would want to do, like work for a company that sends you out and then you get paid if you, you know, buy how many photos they buy, if that's what it is? Um, or do you think that you would rather do the legwork and get the job yourself and be able to collect everything yourself and basically take the risk that all the risks that are involved, you know, people not paying, blah, blah. So that's the other end of it, right? Uh, you know, what do you think? Like, this is a, a totally new part of the business. And I think, again, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, I don't think, I'm not one of those people that's like, they're taking the work. I don't think this work really would have existed except in this position. Like, I feel like this wouldn't have existed. The person that's paying for this would probably just have had their friend do it, would probably have just have shot it with their phone. At least they're paying a photographer on some level. I hope that it doesn't actually create a situation where art directors and stuff um, for bigger companies are like, hey, let's move over and do it for $100. Because if that starts happening, then I'm not really sure. You know, and I, and I can't even imagine that that would happen. I mean, I have to believe that People from high-end companies want unique stuff. That's the reason why they don't just buy stock photography because there's tons of great stock photography out there. Um, they don't just buy stock. They don't buy stock because they don't want somebody else to have the images they have. So, um, yeah, let me know, guys. What do you think about this? Uh, if this is your first time here, please subscribe. Ring the little bell so you know when I go live. Uh, let me know what else you guys want to see as far as videos uh, go. Uh, I'm kind of picking stuff out of the news and what people uh, say to me. So um, I may also do like kind of a... Uh, question one, so start throwing me questions because maybe I'll do like one where I answer a bunch of smaller questions. Um, and I'll see you next time.